racing in after it. Now here's Jason Little with a shot. Week one, stopped in front of the goal. St. John's has possession. With three seconds showing on the clock, that'll do it for the first overtime period. And that means the team may be getting a break. I don't know exactly what Jesse Pomeroy is going to signal here. He's talking to some of the St. John's players, but he seemed to indicate that, hey, we're not going to clean the ice or something. But it looks as though they are going to clean the ice. The ice looks pretty rough out there now, Roger. I know that. It, uh, it wouldn't hurt exploits if they cleaned it because there's a lot of players there who would enjoy five minutes rest here. Seems and like no one wants to give in here in overtime. And that is indeed the case. Uh, the referee talking with the linesman. Tony Grimes, the team coach, now having a chat with the referee, Jesse Pomeroy, and the players are going to their bench. So that means that we're going to come back when we return with the second overtime period. The Provincial Irving Phantom Hockey Challenge. You're watching it here on Cable 9. What a finish we're in for, Barry Manuel here at the Windsor Stadium. We've gone through three periods of regulation time. We're now into overtime. We've gone through one period of our overtime. And now we've got another 10 minutes put up on the clock there as we get set to start the second overtime period here at the Windsor Stadium. A real battle between these two hockey teams. Yeah, there's not much you can say at this point, Roger, uh, other than whichever one of these teams wins this game is certainly uh, deserving of it. and. Uh, kind of too bad if someone's uh, going to end up being the loser, but that's, uh, that's hockey. St. John's 5, Exploits Valley 5. Exploits Valley appeared to be headed to a victory in regulation time, but with 104 remaining in regulation, Mark Oakley with a shot that beats goaltender Matt Grimes to tie things up. And that's where we are now. We've gone through one period of overtime, and both teams have had a couple of chances in the first 10 minutes, the overtime period, the first overtime, to put the puck past uh, the opposing goaltender. But such was not the case, so they gave the teams a breather, cleaned the ice, and were underway. The second overtime period, a pass intended for Chris Walsh. Walsh couldn't reach it now. Exploits Valley dump it. To the blue line, it's in across the line. Here's Exploits Valley with a shot. That one was blocked. Puck comes out to the center ice area. Long shot to shoot it right back in. Exploits Valley has to retreat to get back on side. Puck out at center ice, and it's dumped in by St. John. An icing call will come against the St. John's team, so we're going to get a face-off deep in St. John's territory. It seems like both teams have come out here. Uh, Roger is still a little bit lifeless, even though it's second overtime. It's been a long game. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the pace has been high to, to the entire game, and uh, I'm sure these teams haven't got much left to give right now. Jason Little will take the draw against Brian Clark. A couple of big guns who had a couple of goals each yesterday in the round-robin game between these two teams. The St. John's won by a score of 6-3. to three. The winner here tonight will win by a score of 6-5, to five, who... Who it is, we don't know yet. Here's St. John's bringing the puck in across the line. Ryan Clark with it, trying to set it up for Hedges at the side of the goal. Steered out of harm's way, cleared, but not outside the zone. It's in back of the net now. It's off the stick of Hedges. Clark had it. Now it's cleared to the line. Kept in, though, by St. John's. And finally cleared out to center ice. Long shot from center, and Matt Grimes will leave it there for his defenseman. Puck is shot out to the center ice area. St. John's once again content to dump it back into the exploit zone. 
off the board. Here's a pass intended for Rory Cashin. Would have been a two-line pass in any case, and Cashin was nowhere near it. And the puck goes back into the exploit zone. St. John's gains possession in the corner. Here's St. John's trying to set up a play. Puck in back of the goal. They set it up in front, and it goes on to the stick of Trevor Horwood. Here's Horwood down the right wing, or I should say Rory Cashin. Cashin had it knocked off his stick, gets it in back of the goal, tries to poke it out in front. Cashin again with it. Dumping it to the corner for Healy. Right in front, and a chance for Jason Little. He couldn't get any wood on it in the nick of time. Puck is cleared and outside the blue line. It's shot now to the open wing. Rory Cashin gets there first, tries to shoot it back into the St. John zone. St. John getting the puck in the center ice area. It's knocked off the stick. Here's Jason Little with it. Little in across the blue line. Had it knocked off his stick. Gets the puck and fires it around the board. It goes back of the goaltender, Cowan. St. John's with it now. St. John's. Deep in their own zone. Exploit trying to hold it against the boards inside St. John's territory. Now here's a pass for Hedges. Hedges trying to get around the defense. And here's a chance for St. John's. Hedges scores! It's all over! St. John's has won the Provincial Bantam Irving Hockey Challenge. Jason Hedges scores the game-winning goal. It's all over here at the Windsor Stadium. Jason Hedges scores a game-winning goal, beating Matt Grimes. St. John's win it by a score of 6-5. to five. They trail at one point going into the third period by a score of 5-2. to two. St. John's win it 6-5 to five and have earned the right to advance to the Atlantic Irving Bantam Hockey Challenge. Let's watch the scoring play once again. You see Hedges right at the side of the goal, waiting for the pass. Yeah, the defenseman kind of got caught there, Roger, and uh, the other defenseman tried to clear the puck. Unfortunately, the uh, St. John's player picked it up and uh, went in and made a nice pass, and, and he put it in the net. And uh, I kind of feel bad uh, right now for uh, well for the whole exploit team for the effort they put forth today, and they got nothing to show for it, but. Uh, they put up a, a good fight, and, and as we said many times, they weren't expected to do uh, anything in this tournament, and they took it to two overtimes in the championship game. Final four, St. John six, Exploits Valley five. We're back in a few moments with the post-game ceremony. <laughs> of course, Roger, uh, you really had to feel a little bad there for uh, for the goaltender, Matt Grimes, he's played so well all weekend, and he, unfortunately, he let in a, a goal there to tie it up with about a minute four left in the third period. And it's the type of thing that, uh, okay, we're in overtime now, and if, if exploits had scored, that would easily have been forgotten. Uh, now St. John's has scored, so I'm sure there'll be people looking back at that. But those things happen, and uh, I'm sure Matt will be able to shake it off and move on. Well, they're shaking hands now in the center ice area. We're gonna take a break and come back with our post-game ceremonies at ice level with Barry Manuel. So on behalf of Barry Manuel, I want to say thank you for joining us for our broadcast, which incidentally has been brought to you in part by k &L Sports here on Cable 9, and also Janine's Pizza and Denaire on Duggan Street, Grand Falls, Windsor, 
Corey Mitchell uh, receiving the player of the game there for the exploit squad. Uh, I'm sure that Corey played about 80% of this game and uh, him along with the rest of the exploit team right now are a bit dejected. Pritchard. Manager Al Dewire, Coach Tony Grimes, Dan Davis, Trainer Jim King. What do you do this, Barry? No, no, no. The exploit team, of course, receiving the uh, silver medals for the Irving Cup Challenge this weekend. And uh, given the fact coming in, they weren't expected too much. I'm sure once uh, the initial blow of uh, losing this game in double overtime wears off, that they'll be fairly pleased with their accomplishment this weekend. Now for St. John's and the gold medal presentations. Gold medal to St. John's minor, provincial camp. Number 30, Ray Cowan. 27, Merrick Oakley. 47, Chris Hines. 56, Ryan Clark. 57, Jason Hedges. 62, Matthew Walt. 24, Paul Murphy. 25, Ryan Connor. 28, Billy Bray. 34, Darren Holloran. 40, Richard Cliff. 43, Daniel Cowley. 46, Scott Clark. 58, Herb Gibson. Gibbons. 64, Corey Walsh. 49, Paul Hammerman. 51, Colin Doyle. 60, Curtis Thorne. Manager, Jerry Colony. Coach, Fred Walsh. Trainer, Chris Hines. And there you have it. That's the uh, gold medal presentations to the St. John's team. Obviously deserving of the medals, they uh, went through the entire tournament without a loss. We're getting ready now to have the presentation of the Irving Cup. Bob's 
Bob Grimes is going to present the uh, championship trophy now to uh, the winning team. So you saw a good uh, show of uh, good sportsmanship there at the end with uh, exploits giving the team from St. John's a good round of applause. St. John's now are getting uh, ready for the traditional uh, team pitcher. St. John's are uh, heading around the ice there now under victory lap with the Irving Cup and uh, we're going to speak shortly with uh, Jason Hedges, player of the game for St. John's and uh, we've got a uh, pizza certificate here from Donini's Pizza to uh, present to him for the St. John's team. Donini's of course along with Irving Oil and uh, K&L Sport were sponsors and brought you the coverage here on Cable 9. How you doing, Jason? I'm doing fine. Yeah. Have a look up here in the camera, all when they uh, focus on us, they do. They managed to pull it out, eh? Mm. Uh huh? It's a bit iffy there for a while. Okay, yeah, down here in the corner, uh, Jason, you see the camera down there? We've got uh, Jason Hedges here now, player of the game with the St. John's team. Uh, hard fought battle there, Jason. Uh, you guys managed to pull it off. What do you think of the game? Well, it was, it was a bit iffy there going into the third period, but we prayed to God and God answered our prayers with two big goals and then we took it into overtime and we gave it to him. Yeah, I think anybody could have been a winner there at the end and, and both the teams were winners in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, we've got the certificate here from Donini's Pizza to present to uh, you and for, on behalf of the rest of the team yeah. uh, for a pizza for you guys before you go back uh, to St. John's. So I hope you have a safe trip back and uh, congratulations again. Thanks a lot and I'd like to thank you very much. Thanks, Jason. Okay, uh, we got Dan Davis here now, one of the uh, coaches with the uh, Exploits team. And uh, Dan, uh, I guess, obviously, it's a bit of a disheartening feeling after losing in double overtime, but uh, we know the way sports goes, and uh, sometimes then things happen. What do you think about it? Well, we, uh, we had them in the third period, of course. We played really well. We knew we had to play uh, that kind of game, very physical, to keep pace with them. They are very fast. Uh, give them all the credit in the world. They didn't die. They came back. Overtime, anybody could have won it, so... Uh, I think I'd give credit to our guys as well. I mean, they played a great series. Uh, we were here as a host team, went all the way to the championship and almost took it away. So, uh, Yeah, you mentioned there the good effort uh, and exploits, and I noticed, uh, watched a couple of games here the weekend, and uh, in particular today, you could see that they really were given uh, extra effort. The forwards were back-checking, and that was a big key to reason why this game even went into overtime. And unfortunately, the guys couldn't pull that overtime. They had their uh, chances, but, you know, uh, I'm sure uh, those guys will get over it, and they'll take... Uh,